Welcome to Dude RV. I really appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time for another project. About a year ago, I did a, a mod on the RV's airflow system, on the air conditioner airflow system, and it almost doubled the air flow through the air conditioners on Miss Trudy Thunder. And I'll, I'll link to that video right up here on a card so that you can see that. I improved the airflow, which improves the efficiency and the effectiveness. So we're able to get a whole lot more cooler air moving through the coach since I made that modification. So our coach actually has a diesel generator that is sufficient in size to power both air conditioning units and the microwave. It is a 50 amp coach and we need that 50 amps to power both air conditioners, the front, the rear and the front, front and rear. So you can run, you can actually operate the coach with one air conditioner on a 30 amp power pedestal. But in my mission, to document all of the public campgrounds in the state of Texas and beyond, I'm finding that there are way more 30 amp sites than there are 50 amp sites, especially when you get into the, uh, the recreation.gov campsites, Corps of Engineer. But most of those are, are 30 amp sites. And I find that most of your really great sites, like your lakeside, campsites most of those are 30 amp and then we have to bring in the texas heat and humidity if the wife wants to go camping with me we need to have both air conditioning units working and we're moving into a more long-term rv situation so it, it's we need to have the ability to operate both air conditioning units no matter where we are camped. There's a unique solution to, to this. And why it's not included in RV air conditioners from the manufacturer, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it would add that much to the overall cost. But a device, that, it's called a soft start. I don't know exactly the details of how it works and you don't need to know that either. What, what we need to know is that we can operate both air conditioning units off of a 30 amp pedestal or operate one unit off of a one of, of a 20 amp uh, plug. So if you're mooch docking or like in this situation, that's, a, that's about 75 feet from the nearest plug to the coach. So I have a really big extension cord that I run out there to power the coach, but I don't, I can't run the air conditioner. It's, there's, there's just not enough. I could run it for a little bit, but everything would start to get hot and the breaker would trip and the, the cords would melt. And we don't want that. Cords melting is a bad thing. But having the ability to run an air conditioning unit while we're loading during the summer would be wonderful. And I mean, without having to fire up the generator. Diesel's expensive. And my neighbors re really don't care to hear my generator running. So I I've got a couple of object uh, objectives I'm trying to achieve here. One is the ability to run an air conditioner in front of my house. And two, being able to run both air conditioners when I'm plugged into a 30 amp pedestal at a campground. There's a product on the market called a soft start. There's actually several manufacturers of this type of technology, but I reached out to soft start RV and I asked if they'd be interested in doing a, a sequel to my air conditioner modification video. And they said, oh, heck yeah, we really like that video. And so they sent me two of their RV soft start units. It does, or soft start RV unit. Two of their soft start RV units. And what this does is it 
controls the startup process of the compressor. So it's not just on. That spike, that when it kicks on, it pulls a whole lot of power. If the breaker is not of sufficient size, that load, when both of those air conditioners are on, will trip that breaker. I'm going to give you an example of how that works momentarily. Let's talk about the Soft Start RV package, what I received. So since I have two units, they sent me a dual unit package, which is two of the Soft Start RV units, modules, whatever we're going to call them. And it's just, it's a little rectangular box. It's got some wires coming out of it. Actually has, it only has five wires coming out of it. And then there's also a little packet of doodads, gigaws, thingamajiggers that goes with it. It's the bonus installation kit. One of the things that has really impressed me about the Soft Start RV product is the support. So on their website, they have installation instructions for every RV air conditioner on the market. And they tell you how to find the exact information on the AC unit. And then you go into the list and you pull down you find your schematic. So for Trudy Thunder, I found that I needed this particular schematic. So these are the inst inst instructions for installing. There's only six steps. So there's five wires and six steps. I guess the six, one of those six steps must be mounting the box or something. Well, we'll figure that out when we get on the roof. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the problem and I'm gonna use a portable generator to demonstrate the problem. Then I'm gonna do an install on the device. So I wanna show you that it can be done and that it's not real difficult I've never installed one before, so it's going to be a learning experience for both of us. And once we have the, the units installed, oh, we have the devices, once we have them thingamajiggers installed on both air conditioners, I'm going to repeat the test with the portable generator and we'll see if we can run both of those off of the propane powered portable generator uh, which right now as you'll see when I fire up both air conditioning units it trips it, it goes into a fault mode so let's go to it let's go I'll show you the problems and then we'll start working on a solution we're going to test the the factory setup on the dual air conditioning system for for the coach but rather than using the onboard generator which is big enough to power both of those air conditioners uh, you can actually run both air conditioners and the microwave at the same time with the onboard generator i have my th my dual fuel generator puts out 3060 watts it's an inverter generator on propane now on gas it gets more power but with the propane it's putting out 3000 watts which is which is not enough to run both air conditioners i'm going to trip the breaker on the generator by turning on both air conditioning units once we have the soft starts installed on both units we'll repeat this test to see how that works i have the generator fired up on our control panel we have two air conditioner controls so we're going to turn on the front one first and you'll hear the compressor. All right, the generator's carrying that load. There it 
there it is. And we were looking for that. Now we're going to turn on the rear. And we're going to need to lower the thermostat there to 65. I'm up on the roof now. I've already removed the cowling for the, the AC unit. And we're gonna be working inside this panel. And when you're uh, looking for your instructions, it tells you to, uh, it, it's kinda a little bit vague. You're looking for a yellow schematic. And that's on the inside of this right here. You wanna make sure you turn off the power because you don't want to get shocked. Now, I'm not a professional and I'm just a handy guy with some experience in the trade. So what we're looking for is for your instructions there's this number right here on the bottom little bitty small numbers and that'll help you get the right wiring diagram so that you don't connect it improperly so according to the steps first step is to route some wires so we want to route the black yellow and blue inside into this box we already have a hole here and it's got some some pooky stuff in there and we're most likely going to end up mounting that device all right so we got the wire around it right in there Step number two. That's actually step number one is follow the white compressor wire from compressor, which would be this one, to the run capacitor. So we want to disconnect from, we got to find the run capacitor, which is inside the panel there. And we want to disconnect from terminal and connect to blue. So we want to find the end of this wire, unplug it from the capacitor, and then connect it to this wire. And just so you know, when you're working with capacitors, they are kind of like batteries and they hold electricity. So you gotta be real careful when you're sticking your fingers in there because it'll zap you really bad. So we're looking for this wire where it connects to that capacitor right down there. We'll just simplify it. We'll pull that little capacitor right there. That way you can see it. So there's a male. There we go. So I've pulled the capacitor out, make it easy to for you to see. And we are gonna verify we're connecting white wire to blue soft start wire new connector onto the end of the yellow the little yellow connector onto the blue wire and i have a pair of needle nose pliers that have, have a built-in crimper but you can also use one of these these are very inexpensive So now we want to be mindful that this is a capacitor and it very likely has some power in it. Now 
we've got that connected. We want to insulate it. I'm a big fan of Scotch 33 electric tape for anything, everything. It doesn't dry out and it's stretchy. So the next step, connect black soft start wire to where we just removed the white wire. We get a couple of options on the female connector side. So you have the one that's a doubler or you have the one that's a single. We don't really need to double anything. So, step number three, yellow soft start wire on terminal next to red compressor. So we're gonna plug the yellow wire in next to the red on this side. So we need another female connector for that. Remove the compressor cap, disconnect black wire. So we're now over here. We're gonna remove the compressor cap. So we've got a I didn't bring a wrench. So we're gonna disconnect this wire and we're gonna connect it to this wire, which means we're going to need a male connector. Insulate that. So it says break male tangent off of piggyback connector. Why wouldn't we just do... Oh, I see. So it, the difference between the two female connectors is this one's wider. And so they're instructing us to break this little device off and use it because it's thicker. So we... Like that. Connect that to the brown wire. We gotta bend. We gotta bend our female connector 90 degrees. Secure all wires. Tape connections with electrical tape. So now we've got to turn on some power and hope it doesn't blow up running and the instructions say to turn on the AC turn the AC to cool and move it to 50 degrees 
And then we look for the lights. Wow. That's quiet. <laughs> we think it take up to three minutes for the green light to come on, but ours came on like right away. So that's installation. Now let me button this all back up and do number two and then we'll go do our generator test. So far the hardest part has been climbing up the ladder. We're now ready to fire up the small portable generator and turn on both air conditioners and let's see what's gonna happen. The lights to watch are right there. <laughs> So the compressors on both air conditioners. Ha, we're cooling with a little generator. How cool is that? Ha. All right, let me let me turn some stuff off, and we'll we'll talk a little more. Man, I'm 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 excited. I, I you know that was the outcome that I was expecting, but you never know when you're in the middle of a project like this whether or not it's actually going to work the way you want it to work. This is so cool that I can run both of my air conditioners. They're 13 fives, but I can run both of them off of this portable propane generator. Now, if you've never worked with a dual fuel generator, it, this thing puts out way more power than it with gas than it does with propane. With, with propane, it's more of an economy kind of action. Uh, so the, the soft start RV device, night and day difference. So we're gonna be able to do some camp, do a lot of camping in 30 amp campsites and it have our, our AC too. That's the beautiful thing. We can have cool air in the best campsites. The, the technology, the soft start, devices come with a one-year manufacturer's warranty there's a special if you register as soon as you get them installed they give you a second year warranty for free no money for a two-year warranty that's longer than most people keep their rvs there are links and there's a link in the description below and there's a link in the card above that will take you to the soft start rv website where you can get a discount use the code dude rv and you'll get a nice discount good enough to pay for a night of camping if you found this to be informative fun entertaining interesting i'd appreciate you clicking on that thumbs up that really helps with the youtube algorithm if you've not already i'd be really honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button i produce all kinds of rv and camping related content well, I've, have, I've been posting three videos a week for the last three years. I haven't missed an upload. Although I'm needing a vacation. I need to go RVing. For those of you who have been following along, thank you. I am most honored. I really appreciate your support. And for my patrons, I'm most grateful. Thank you. You rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?